The following documents and recordings are the seventh instalment in a compilation detailing the events of Graham Casson's return to Svalbard, following the occurrences of Outpost Freestead and Base Camp Piedra. Mr. Kasner was accompanied by fellow specialist Dracana Vukovic, archaeology professor Dr. Josefa Guerrero, and oceanographer Dr. Amelia Murray. Dr. Murray remained in the Alasan while the others continued to the outpost. In the summer months, Arctic cyclones are the foremost type of hazardous weather present in areas across the northern Atlantic, northern Pacific, and North Seas, capable of developing tumultuous sea conditions, impacting sea ice, dropping heavy precipitation, and resulting in avalanches, these Arctic cyclones can severely impact the lives of local populations. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Vault Following the previous compilation, Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic rushed down the hatch below Outpost Freestead's auxiliary bunker, chasing the screams of the abducted Dr. Guerrero. While the returning team was facing the creature in Svalbard's interior, Dr. Amelia Murray, outfitted with an extra body camera supplied by Ms. Vukovic, remained in Nialasan with the remaining survivors of the Guardian's massacre. This first recording comes from that body camera, several hours after Mr. Kasner's team left the town. In the video, Dr. Murray is seated in the common area, speaking with Dr. Duan. Over Dr. Duan's shoulder is a large window, and outside the weather remains unchanged and opaque. He's snoring now. This is a light snoring. I've heard it for several days now. It will get worse. I don't know if they were good friends of yours. Granted, I don't think they would have left you here if you were good friends. But I'm not sure they're coming back. Should we really wait for them? I don't know them very well. We met in Longyear and I needed someone to get me here and Dragana knew how to fly the helicopter. I feel the same. I don't know if they're going to make it back. But what other options are there? I can't fly the helicopter. I don't believe anyone here can. In that, you're right. But if this storm clears up, we can think about taking a boat. I know how to get back to Longyear Buren from here. Clear skies are not an indicator of safety. The waves and currents could still kill us, and the creature may still be out there. It could be worse if there is more than one. We have no way of keeping ourselves safe out there. I'm not entirely satisfied that we're safe in here. And I've seen them. There are things in the water. It's not safe. What's out there? I... I'm not sure. Those creatures, maybe... They are difficult to see beneath the waves and with this weather. Where's Lisa? Asleep. We're lucky we didn't see what she saw. She's holding together so well, given what we know. So, our only option is to wait for others? Either those who just left to fly us out, or someone from Longyear Buren. Not used to feeling useless, Doctor. I just don't want to wait around when I could be doing something useful. It's better to help yourself than to wait for others. Not in this situation. It's better to stay inside, stay safe, and wait for it to pass. Being a hero, being curious, or even just wanting to do something helpful could kill you. Listen to her, Carter. I saw what that thing did to the buildings. You saw what it did to Lisa's group. This isn't a problem we can fix. We can't even reach anyone on the radio. Lori and I have been trying to speak with anyone outside of town since however long it's been. Maybe our radio is broken. Maybe. But it was working before the storm. And there is another we could use. In the emergency station. That place was trashed. The weather station is the safest place to wait out the storm. Like Kasna said, just stay in and stay down. He cannot afford the high price of stepping outside that door. I know, Dr. Murray. I've been here quite a bit longer than you at this point. 
You do seem to be overly confident in your knowledge of our shitty situation, despite how recently you arrived. So were the others. The ones you traveled here with. And that doctor? She seemed a bit like the others. Crazed. It takes a while for that to set in. As far as we know. And you said you just got here. We saw what happened, Carter. We walked through it. Wooden metal torn open. The dead. It didn't disappear, it's just waiting out there. The monster and its carnage, I assure you. The weather station is the safest place to wait this out. If you knew anything, you'd tell us, right? What would I know? Maybe what this is. May I have that back, please? Of course. I'm not a thief. Just a snoop, then. Hmm. That looks First Nations. Maybe Inuit? You said you were an oceanographer. The other woman, she was the archaeologist. How did you get that? It's not. It's a carved piece from Iceland given to me as a gift. It's terrible. Grotesque. It is, isn't it? Perhaps put it away before Lisa sees it. It's not something we need to worry about. But it's certainly upsetting. Everyone is frightened enough as it is. We don't need any more oddities. Everyone. We're six total. We're alive, Carter. We'll work on that for now. Toilet? Out the door. Turn left. First door on the right. He left several hours ago, along with an Eastern European woman and a Spanish-speaking archaeology professor, Dragona and Guerrero. Yes, he's on his way to an outpost somewhere. They were adamant that I not join them. I also got attacked by survivors here in the Alicent and broke part of my hand. Thankfully. Most of the town has been completely devastated by the creatures, but a few made it to the weather station. That's where I am now. What should I do? He's gone, and I wasn't able to get the object on him. Interesting. Explain. They'll just follow him. So they're not outside, but the weather is still impassable. What is it waiting on? If this clears up, the survivors can leave. I understand. Thank you for the clarification. But if he's gone and they're going with him, I missed my opportunity. More? Where? Of course. I've even seen them in the water. Thank you, I'll go. I want to see it again. I'll find them. But first I have to convince them to let me out of this place. Goodbye. After a review of the recording, no technical reason could be determined for the incomprehensible presentation of the individual on the other end of the call. Dr. Murray made the call while seemingly having forgotten that she was wearing a body camera. Across Svalbard, Graham Kasner and Drakana Vukovic were descending below Outpost Freestead, following the distant calls of Dr. Josefa Guerrero. The following recording comes from Mr. Kasner's body camera. Due to the decreasing natural light during the descent through the caves, the video is in black and white until they reach the village cave under the ice. Is this 
how you remember it? The caves like this? Yes. But the blood is gone. Keep up. Don't let go of the rope. She's still alive. Maybe. There was rock fall here. It was reported by another team, but now there's nothing. They got the location wrong. Or they lied. Or it opened for us. When we got to the village, there was rock fall that locked us in. If it's not there, something moved it. Earlier, when your Sefa was taken, you called a different name, Karina. The woman you lost in the beginning? I was... I was confused in the moment. It all feels too similar. But you didn't get her back. I'm sorry. But does this feel too similar? Is Yosefa gone? Graham. Something is different. The rockfall has been moved. They are here. Ah, Yevig. They want the fair. Graham, this place is a wonder. Get your crampons on. I'll set the cams. Keep facing the village. Stay away from the edge until we're ready to descend. And don't let those statues out of your sight. Wow. What? Hmm? What did you say? What? Uh, nothing. Thank you for coming back for me. I know it must have been difficult. <sighs> yeah, Graham. You helped me make a tough choice. I know that must have been hard for you. Are you okay? Graham? Do you hear them? Hear what? No. We can fix this. We'll help you more from here on out. If you need it. Shut up, Heath. Graham. Graham, calm down. I think he can do it. What's wrong? He's already Just here. shut up! Ah, what the shit, Graham? <laughs> Don't you ever point a gun at me! Are you okay? They wouldn't stop talking, just talking like they're still alive. You didn't hear them? I heard your Sefa. Screams. And some static. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. I've never made a stupid ass mistake like that before. As long as it doesn't happen again, I forgive you. These things are targeting you, my friend. Uh, coming back here was a mistake. Many good things are mistakes, and many bad things are planned. <laughs> There's no way to choose between right and wrong without both leaving a little bit of a mess and some intention. But yes, for you, this is shit. And for me, well, for me too. We know we are not here for ourselves. I am here for you, you are here for her, and that is what it is. We are here. We can fix this together from the inside. Or die trying. Well, if you keep pointing a shotgun my way, then I'll certainly kill you. Huh. But I'm making it out of here. I've already bought a burial plot and I'll die before they bury my body somewhere else. That shit's expensive. <laughs> oh, very, very expensive. Huh. Uh, they move. Damn. They know when we're looking. Or they needed us not to look. I don't know. Cam is set. Descend, and I'll keep an eye out. No belay. Down we go! Coming down. I guess that's where we're going. Good guess.
when the cameras from both Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic were examined, the audio confirmed Ms. Vukovic's series of events as well. On her camera, static and the screams of Dr. Guerrero can be heard during the same time period as the above sections. At the time of their arrival, to the drop down on the ground of the dome beneath the ice, statues were visible around the distant parts of the village, inside roofless structures, outside the anatomical theatre, within the windows of buildings built into the walls, and up on the ledges that line the dome. But after Ms. Vukovic punched Mr. Kastner to secure his weapon, the cameras regained focus on the statues, which were now aligned along a path leading to the anatomical theatre. The pair remained relatively silent during their cautious walk to the anatomical theatre. There were notable differences from the last time the building was recorded. The stones blocking the door had been pushed outward with great force, opening the archway for easy passage and scattering rocks out across the open plaza. Inside, there was no stone box or heart on the platform, and the World War II era backpack from the Finnish man no longer appeared to be present. While remaining relatively silent and communicating with hand movements that only rarely fell within view of the recording, Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic continued forward to the centre of the theatre. There, on Ms. Vukovic's body camera, it was possible to see Kasner indicate to the floor. When Ms. Vukovic looked down, there were several boxes missing from the floor and rubble and debris littered one of the mid-tier risers. When they reached the descending stairs lined with teeth, they paused to discuss their actions. This is the recording from Mr. Kasner's body camera. Down the stairs. Was that more goddamn teeth, Graham? Yes, down the stairs. The lights won't work. Neither will the recordings or some of the gear. Not until we get far enough in. Yes, I saw the tapes. Some of them. Any idea why? No. So, crack a chem light and stay connected. I studied the video from Rosa and Jonas. We need to reach the room where Rosa was taken. The glyphs and the light, that's the way in. That's what we're after. I'll be right on your heels. They blocked the exit. We didn't plan on going back there anyways. Huh. The intermittent interference previously encountered in the caves below the anatomical theatre promptly took over the recording. This time, however, a familiar pattern was slightly audible in the disruption, the disturbing audio from the radio. No patterns of note were found in the visual interference. In northern Sweden, I was attempting to come to terms with my choice while my mother continued to deal with the fallout from my actions and those of Mr. Kastner and his team. The following recording comes from my personal recording device. At first, I had opted not to include the foremost section, but have since come to terms with the events enough to reassess its inclusion. Did you know him well? I don't have to know someone well to care. No, I didn't know him well. Not as a person. I only knew him as a survivor from Svalbard. And I sent him back like a tool. I knew him here. I knew him far better for years now. But I didn't choose to kill him. 
I chose to kill Kasna. Is that the goal? To turn daughters into murderers like their mothers? To forge new bonds out of soulless choices? Dear. No. No, I don't want to hear it. Not now. Just... I can't hear it. All right. Ursäkta mig. Jag har fått ett samtal som du inte har tagit med. Kan du vänta? Tyvärr inte. I will return soon. There is a call I must take. Take it here. I've made the choice. I'm a part of this now. No more secrets, not one. I'll take the call here, Vidar. Here you are. What do we have? We have got, um... English, please. We have a guest. We received uh, news of further communications from within the expanding activity radius of the Svalbard site. An additional satellite radio communication, not originating from our side, made it out of Nyolasund. This is not what Hulda and I had previously agreed upon. How long remains in our contract? We have 17 hours. What do we know about the call? No contents as of now, but we've identified the caller in Nyolasund as a Dr. Amelia Murray. She's an oceanographer who recently signed on with Sager Group. How did you know it was Sager Group? As I stated before when you called your man on the ground, family calls can make it through. They do not disrupt our communications. It would only hinder our ability to aid them in their goals. What do we know about this Dr. Murray? She was aboard the RV Eluka, an Antarctic research and coring vessel. Oh. After her time on the vessel, she was pursued by Sigur Group's offshore research department. Her passport was used to enter Oslo International Airport six days ago, where she boarded a connecting flight to Longyearbyen. There are no records of Dr. Amelia Murray on any family tree. Also, no criminal history or history of travel to additional sites. So, this woman, she was sent to end the cycle. If I couldn't. No, no. How do you know? Hulda and her mother are not without their patents and tendencies. Already the Svalbard site has claimed a new guardian this cycle, so she is not sending one of the devout to join them. The site has made its selection, so she is not intending another sacrifice. Sending Dr. Murray means she is either someone working in research, which is highly unlikely but not impossible if she is not of a family. The corruption is too fast. Or she has been sent to die. With the site and guardians as agitated as they are, there will be many casualties. So you think she's there to die? It's an extreme measure. It's too well documented and too bold. Such instances are why we have Sveda and the other artifacts. If we need someone gone, they can do so without notice. So why send someone? Why hire her onto the company first? It muddies the water. Why her? Do we know anything else? Not at this time. Get me everything you can on Dr. Murray. Thank you. Kasna was worried about Sol and Jarlison. And you think it's this Dr. Murray? It certainly could be. You look worried. I am worried. I thought Hulda and I had come to an understanding. We are two of the most strongly bonded families. When we spoke on this set of events, I thought we had come to a mutual agreement on the timeline and what actions for which each of us were responsible. Trust is key for this to work. We all trust each other to do what needs to be done to help each other. Would telling her what I did ease the tension? Possibly, but Dr. Murray is the problem. More clearly, she's a problem that Hulda has yet to fill me in on. Is there a reason she wouldn't tell you? Perhaps she doesn't yet know what to say. Something new? I have said before, we do not know everything. So what do you intend to do? Wait. I have people looking for more information on Dr. Murray as we speak. 
Call Hilda. Call Seizure Group and get answers. Every moment you don't know, and that I don't know, leads to more deaths. We don't have the luxury of waiting. This is not how things are done. If the intention is to never change your actions based on new information, why look at any of this? Why all the tools and equipment? Why try to read any of it? Learn anything? If you know how hard all this is, hard enough that you didn't want me to suffer through it, why not change the way things are done? Vidar? Please, keep my daughter company while I go make some calls. I'll be back soon. You are right. We have to be willing to accept change. I'll go put the water on for coffee. Tea, please. <laughs> then tea it will be. This concludes the seventh set of collected records from my personal examination of events and my family's involvement in the developing situation across multiple vault sites. Back in the case of the Svalbard site, the interference preventing the body camera recordings of Mr. Kasner and Ms. Vukovic eventually cleared up. At that point, it appeared they were still within the caves, at a similar point where the recording equipment of the original Outpost Freestead team regained functionality. The following audio comes from Mr. Kasner's body camera recording. While the lighting is spotty, it comes from two sources. His immediate area near the camera is lit with a personal chemical light, while a shotgun-mounted flashlight is used for directional lighting. The glow of Ms. Vukovic's chemical lights can be seen periodically. Lights are coming back. Do we know where to go from here? I know a few directions not to take. Otherwise, we search. Lead the way. I haven't heard anything from Yosefa since we went down those stairs. Have you? No. She's... She's gone. I found her camera when we were leaving. She left it for us. She knew she wasn't coming back. She was an intelligent woman. She knew how dangerous this was. Of course. I don't think we could have stopped her from trying. What's in that room? A storage room for whale oil. Massive stone drums of oil left to rot. Don't know how in this temperature, but I can tell. How'd they get in here? This way. we approaching now? I don't know. This is new. Stay alert. What? A battery? That's not all. There's tons of shit in here. This is just stuff. People's stuff. Jackets, boots, bags. Graham, look. It's a sword. <laughs> this looks real. Viking. Vikings never made it out to Svalbard. There is no proof of any colonization. I'm not saying they colonized this place. It looks like they showed up and promptly died. The evidence we've collected so far supports that model. Oh, holy shit! This is gold! Don't take anything. It's all left over from centuries of death. Viking? Renaissance? Something... This is from the 90s. Oh, look. Here. World War I, I think. And, and that looks to be World War II era. This looks like it came from the 70s. Now let me see oh that bag. This, this was up in the anatomical theater before it belonged to a Finnish man. They must have brought it down here recently. Here. This is Russian. Read the last page or so. Watch the door. Yeni pomenyonev. 
Vrimini near Sunsa. In English? I, I don't recall the time or the sun. It has not been long, but the fear and anger override every thought. More than the fear I felt before in the mines. A different kind of darkness. Finding bones instead of coal, I am in the den of devils. I will die here. I have said all I have to say. May they choke on my bones and drown in my blood. Oh, I like this guy. <laughs> the front of the journal says his name was Mikhail Georgievich, and it was written in 1932. We don't have time to read this whole thing. What about these? Don't you have one like this? That... that is mine. I left it in the bunker. This is our stuff. Karina's books. Heath had these DVDs. Rosa. These are all ours. Fucking trophies! Not trophies. Just storage. Wait! There! In the jacket to your left, in the pocket. What is that? SD card. From Heath. Let me see. I can play this if you want me to. This concludes the seventh set of documents and recordings from the team's return to Svalbard and completes this section of information regarding their descent into the hatch in the auxiliary bunker of Outpost Freestep. The White Vault. 